my next question to you is I'm going from fielder to pitcher now. So DeGrom, my buddy, um, how did he fit in? Because I know we saw the tears slow down after he got hurt. He understands the situation. I remember he had a lot of injuries. For me, like I, I read an article that said it, inev inevitably, it, inevitably, sorry, this wasn't the case of him having those injuries before. But for me, understandable, you have injuries around the elbow. I mean, why, why couldn't it? you know, get fixed then, but it's just frustrating to me. But talk to me about how he fit in as well, because I feel like he was doing just fine in there with Evaldi and Gray and all those guys. And now it's going to be a dominant pitcher's F, which they still are now. Well, I listen, I think that what went on with the Mets and the issues were around his elbow at that point in time, there seems to be some degree of mystery about that. I know that at one point in time, Sandy Alderson said that there was a um, – a sprain there, and then went on to say that it was the, the lowest form of a partial tear. Jacob disputed that and basically said his elbow was completely fine. The Rangers, when they did their first MRI in April this year, um, after he came out of that start against the Yankees, they said there was just inflammation in there. He went back to throwing off of the mound about two weeks later. He had thrown five bullpens. And I think there was some frustration both for Jacob and the club because they'd see Jacob go out there and, and throw a bullpen, and he'd be throwing 98 or 100 miles an hour in the bullpen. And it's like, well, you can't do this with a real elbow problem. And then the next day, he wouldn't feel so great. So there was some real up and down. And I think you know Jacob well enough to know that this is a guy who really knows his mechanics, really knows his body, and what he's gone through the last two years, I think he's really in touch with everything that he's feeling. And so something wasn't right for him. There hasn't been a point that anybody indicated to me where there was kind of a real trauma situation. He didn't cut any of his bullpens short. He didn't have any kind of issues that, you know, stopped him from throwing. But there was this up and down thing. And when they went back in there, you guys also know, you go in and look at any pitcher's elbow, particularly a guy who's been around for as long as Jacob DeGrom is, you're going to see some structural anomalies that probably don't exist for a guy who doesn't throw a baseball. Whether that was a sprain earlier and it's become more of a tear, I think that's a, a little bit of semantics. But this was a guy who fit really well into the rotation, made a, made a huge difference. But I think the thing that we need to talk about here with this rotation is what Nathan Yavaldi has done, both on the mound and I think in terms of bringing these guys together. Brock, I think you played with him a little bit. You know what kind of, of teammate this guy is. He's had a huge impact on this club. Yeah, Evan, that's what I was going to talk to you about. Actually, my next question, I said, what, what, what's happening with, with DeGrom is obviously a huge blow for, for the Rangers in the starting rotation, but you've got a, another guy in Nathan DeGrom who's going out there and pitching like a Jacob DeGrom normally does. And um, I text him after every one of his starts. He's one of my favorite teammates ever. Love the guy to death. Like you said, tremendous to have in the clubhouse, tremendous teammate, tremendous human being. Um, in my opinion, one of the most underrated I mean, now not so underrated signings of the offseason. Um, but, yeah, like kind of go into more depth about kind of what he's doing in the clubhouse, what he means to the other guys, um, and how is he – because he's always had this stuff, right, um, physically. I mean, just a, just a freak athlete, just what he can do with a baseball, how he throws it, but how he's kind of helping out in the clubhouse um, in that type of role. Um, that he's well, in. I mean, I think there's a level of investment in his teammates that you don't often see. Um, this is a guy who watches virtually every bullpen that every guy throws on the side. You know, he watched every start that guys made in spring training. Um, and he's he's paired up with Mike Maddox, who is an old school pitching coach, who's much more of a, a, a prep guy and an attitude in, instiller than he is, you know, a strict biomechanics guy. Um, or a, a pitch design guy. And I think that dynamic has been really good. In some respects, Mike has actually asked Nathan, and I think this plays to Nathan's strengths. He's asked him, hey, will you take a look at something with a certain pitcher and let me know what you think? And in, in specific, he did that with John Gray. And there was something that, that he noticed in Gray's delivery where his foot had, had kind of turned out a little bit. And Gray was having some issues with balance early in the season, made the suggestion of Mike, Mike said, hey, why don't you pass that along to John? Pass it along to John. John has been lights out. He's got a sub-1 sub ERA for the last month plus as well. Um, had an impeccable start last night. And 
you know, when you talk to John about that, he's like, I've never, and this was not demeaning of any other teammate he's ever had, but he's basically said, I've never had a teammate like this. And I've talked to some guys who uh, had played on the 2018 Red Sox with Nathan. They've all kind of echoed that, you know, and I think you had that experience. If this is a guy whose level of investment just goes beyond showing up and doing his work every day. He is genuinely concerned about helping his teammates, and he's got that ability to kind of pass it along in a way that is not intrusive and not, you know, hey, do it this way or or you're going to fail, but just the way that gets everybody to buy in. 